Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment on any videos you would like to see in the future. But in this video, I'm going to be adding friend requests to the LinkedIn app that I built in my last video. I should cover the whole process of setting up a friend request model and then adding the logic so that you can have, uh, like a user can send a friend request to another user and then that user will get the notification they'll be able to go and then either accept or decline the friend request. And that will determine whether or not the two users are friends. So I feel like this will be a really cool idea to cover and I'll show you how to build an app like this and a feature like this inside of your Ruby on Rails app. So I hope you guys are really excited and let's get right into the video. So let's just go ahead and go back into that app right now. I'll restart the server and just see where we were last at. So if I refresh, uh, oh, it looks like we have an error in the nav bar uh, for the current user. Cause I guess we didn't check if there was a current user before we started showing the links. That's okay. So we can go fix that. Let's just go into Visual Studio and I'll open up that app. All right, now that we have the app open, let's just go over to the layouts folder in the nav bar. So in the last episode, this is where I actually added the code uh, to display all these links. But what happened is this condition wasn't wrapping our little drop down. So we need to move this inside of. All we need to do is really move this up. Whoops. So I just did that by selecting the code and then pressing Alt and then and then either the up or down key. I'm gonna put it inside of this if because we have this condition if current user and then now that'll work so it we just it was just because that drop down was outside of the condition and it looks like we need to sign in before we can view the page i don't even remember the sign in so i'm just going to create a new account all right oh whoops I did two of those. Okay. So we sign in. This is what we get. Uh, so we can see all the posts. This is actually by someone else, even though my name is Indigo Tech. Someone Indigo Tutorials was posting. And then I could go view the posts on their profile page. Okay. So this is pretty cool. But there still was some things missing. Like we didn't have a way to actually connect with the user and become friends with them, like you have on LinkedIn. So we're gonna go ahead and build that feature onto this app. All right, so let's start off by adding just a simple button onto this page where you can connect with the user. So let's go do that. So back in the code, I'm gonna go into, quickly I'm gonna close all these folders just so that's easier to look at all these files. And I'll go into the app folder, the views folder, and the profile show file. So inside here, this is our simple profile page that we built in the last episode. So all we're really doing is we're showing the user's name and then we're also showing all of the posts. So how about we add our button right underneath their name? We'll add a link to, looks like, what does it say connect with user? We don't have anywhere uh, we don't have like a path set up right now, so I'm just going to use temporary path and then I'll quickly style this. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we have kind of like a button like this. Now I want to push it over here on like the right side. So to do that, I'm just going to add another container here and we can do, do flex justify ends it should push over that button to the side all right so now it's kind of pushed over and then if we wanted to add some padding we could do that too but i think it's fine so when we, when we click this button it should send a request because in LinkedIn, when you're adding somebody as a friend, you have to send a request first and then that user will see 
all of the requests and they can either choose to accept it or decline it. So that's the system that we're gonna use in our app too. All right, so let's go ahead and make a new model for the friend request. So I'll go into the terminal and then I'm gonna type in Rails G model to generate the model. And it's gonna be for friend underscore request. That's what I'm gonna call it. And this is gonna belong to a user. And we're also actually gonna have another user that we're gonna have. So we're gonna say like requested, uh, what should we say? So this is like the user that created it, right? Created the friend request and then requested user is also gonna belong to it. So let's generate this model. But then I'm gonna also edit this migration because right now, our migration won't work by default because this belongs to requested user. It's gonna think it's gonna look for a requested user table, but we don't have a table for that. Have a requested user, we're just gonna have a user table. We have to change this migration. So the foreign key instead of true, it needs to be on table users. And this should work. We'll be able to run a Rails DB migrate to migrate the database. All right, but we get relation requested users do not exist. I think I actually got that wrong. Oh, foreign key to table, not on table. So actually, I did get it wrong. Let's go back and edit this. Um, see, that's all I get for trying to do it from memory. I was pretty close. Two table. Now we can do a DB migrate. Now we have a friend request. We want to go in the console and see what a friend request looks like. Do a friend request dot connection. <laughs> now that's that's where one thing comes in. Like connection already exists in Rails, so that's why I wasn't gonna do a connection class. Because if we tried to do that, uh, yeah, things could go wrong because it's already a used name in Rails. So that's why I did friend request because friend request is pretty easy. Now, if we just look at what friend request is, we have a user ID and we also have a requested user ID. This is already pretty simple. Oh, and one thing I forgot is to say like an accepted Boolean. So let's quickly add that. So I'll do a migration to add that. So we'll say Rails G migration, add accepted to friend request. And then we'll do space accepted colon boolean. And this migration, doing it like this, will automatically create a migration for us. And it does it based off the name. See how we're saying like add this, blah, blah, blah. It really mostly looks at the end of it to find the table that we're adding it to. And then right here with the space when we start adding our attributes it'll use that to actually change the migration so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna edit this migration file that we just generated i'm gonna do it in vim and we're saying add column friend request accepted boolean i'm gonna add a default because by default it'll always be false that it's accepted or actually now that i think about it we might just want to have it nil because, uh, you know, just for like ones that are pending. That's probably a good idea. And we could have also done the enum for this. I'm not really sure which is better. Probably enum would have been better, but it's okay. We're just going to do a Boolean. We're going to default it. We're not going to change the default. We're just going to keep it as nil. And then whatever the user chooses, we'll update to Boolean. All right. So now let's do a Rails DB migrate. To migrate the database and now we added that accepted boolean to the friend request perfect now what we have to do is we have to hook this in back on the show page so that when you click connect with user it actually goes to a controller and it creates that friend request model so let's do that but first of all i'll go to the config routes file and i'll set up the route for this so let's just do a resource 
So right under posts, I'll do resources, friend requests. And it could just be only create. We only really need the create action right now. And then over in the app controllers folder, we'll create a new file called friend request.rb. And inside of here, we'll create a class friend request controller. Should actually, I need to change the name friend request controller. <laughs> dollar b and then we're gonna have a class front request controller that inherits from application controller and then all we're gonna have inside is just a simple create action inside of here we would create the friend request the user would be the current user and then the requested user would be uh the requested user so we're gonna have to set that probably from uh, the page. So we're gonna pass it in as a param. So say requested user equals user.find requested user ID. And we'll just have to pass this in through our button. So if we go back to the show page, right here on the connect with user button, I'm gonna now change this URL so that it goes to this controller. Let me just go to friend request path. And then we're going to pass in that requested user ID and set that to user.id because that's the user that we're looking at on this show page, on the profile page. And then now this should work nicely, but to turn this link into a link that will make a post request to go to our create server, we actually need to change this link up. So we need to add an attribute on it. So it'll be data method post which will tell this link that it should do a post request and now we click this button oh let's see what happens so missing model class requested user okay so that actually makes sense I think we have to go change the model real quick because right now it's still looking for requested user model and we need to tell this class that it should use the regular user model so let's go into the models go to friend request RB and then see we have belongs to user and then we have belongs to requested user. So we need to change this to add class name user so that it knows it should look for a user model. Uh, now that doesn't throw error and it actually creates a friend request. So all we'd have to do now is change this page so that if there's a friend request, it shows a different button. So let's go back to the show page and let's work on that code. So I'll grab this link in a condition that checks if current user dot run requests dot where requested user dot ID. Yeah, user dot ID. We need to say, <laughs> well, let's say instead of saying where, let's say find by, if current user find by, dot present and in that case we do have a friend request otherwise we'll just show the connect with user button and I can end that condition and then let's just add a simple message here and say like friend request pending I'll probably change that UI better, but let's see what happens. So we actually got this error undefined method friend request for user uh, because as part of that um, model that we generated, it only really changed the friend request file and it added all the stuff for friend request. So even though it's that we have this code that says belongs to user, we don't have that set up in the user model. So let's quickly add that. So in the user model, I'm gonna add the association as many friend requests. <clears throat> and actually I'm going to probably has to have like two different ones because we're also going to want as many um, like incoming friend requests right because this would be whenever the user is a requested user so this is has many friend requests just regular but this is, has many incoming friend requests 
So I actually need to uh, look, up, look up the code for this real quick. As many with a custom foreign key. Oh, it's not even showing me. Right here, I think. So as many player sessions. See, so all we really need is the foreign key one. We set foreign key to requested user ID so that it knows uh, to, to use that requested user ID to hook up this association. All right, now let's reload. And we see that everything's working. The friend request is currently pending. Perfect, now I wanna go into the console and I wanna see how that looks if we get the last user. And then we can check their friend request. Do we have one friend request? And if I get the first and I try to get the requested user, you'll see that we get that user. If I set that user to a variable, I just want to try to see if I can get the user dot incoming friend request. Count. Okay, it looks like we got an error. It says uninitialized constant user incoming friend request. Okay, so I think we have to definitely set the class name on here too. Class name will just be user. Or wait. Uh, no, because since we're doing incoming friend request, we're talking about the friend request class. We need to tell it to use that class. All right, and now let's go reload. We should be able to get the user incoming friend request. Uh, incoming. Come on. We have to restart the, the Rails console for that. Okay, user dot first. Is this the one? Yeah, okay, I think this is I think this is the user. So if I just say user dot first dot incoming friend request count. <clears throat> okay, now it's working. So you can see that we have access to the incoming friend request, which then we could use this to display uh, the requests for the user, maybe somewhere up in the nav bar. All right, so I'm gonna change up this text to actually show a button. That's going to be similar to this initial button, but it'll just say like uh, request pending, or like friend. Or, let's say friend request pending, and then actually I want when you click this to actually delete the friend request because I feel like on LinkedIn there should be option. Maybe you don't want to like maybe you don't want to be requesting a friend request or you did it on accident, so you can undo it. So let's change that up. So in the condition, if current user friend requests, uh, this should be fine. Let's just say we could change this a little bit. Or actually, we could probably use the same route, actually. We could leave this exactly the same. The only thing that we really changed is the text. And then in the friend request controller, what we're gonna do is we'll say, <laughs> If friend request equals friend request dot find by user current user requested user requested user. So if we can find that friend request, then we're just gonna destroy. Else we're gonna create it. Okay, so this could almost be like just a toggle kind of controller. And then also what I'm going to do is I want to update the page. So let's quickly reload and see what it looks like. Okay. I think I restart the server. And let's reload. Take a look. Okay, so we have this button, friend request pending. And then if I click, we'll look what happens in the controller. Is it actually is deleting the friend request. But we have to reload to see things change. So I want to fix that by using some hot wire. And I could actually reload this section of the page. Uh, so let's quickly do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this code right here into a partial. Let's say render uh, friend request. I can pass in user 
is the add user. And we'll go over here and we'll make a partial in the profile folder called underscore friend request.html.erb. We'll drop in our code. Okay, so now we move that code into a partial, which means we can use that partial to render it from the controller. But we need some sort of ID to target. So let's add an ID on this container around the friend request. And I'll just call this friend dash request. All right, and now in the friend request controller, we can update that partial, or we can update that part of the page by saying render turbo stream. And then do a colon and pass in turbo stream. Uh, so like basically we're gonna render a turbo stream and then we have to construct a turbo stream right here by saying turbo stream dot and then the method. So the method that I'm gonna do is update, which means it'll replace uh, whatever element we're targeting. So for us, we're targeting an element with the ID of friend request. And then we're gonna pass partial, which I have to set the path to it since we're inside of a different controller. So we have to use profile slash friend request. And then we have to pass in the locals too, which is the user, uh, which is actually the requested user. And then it'll already have the current user because we're inside the controller. So this should already start working. Oh, if I click the button. Oh, so see inside the partial, we're still using the at sign with the user and I need to quickly fix that. So inside of friend request, I need to just change this to use user variable without an at sign, which means it's a local variable. So the at sign means it's global variable. So it's accessible, like, I'm pretty sure it just means like accessible from the controller to the page. That's one thing Because see right here, if we just put it in a variable without the at sign, you can't access it on the page. So there's some interesting things like that you have to realize, but now it should work. Uh, we actually can click connect with user friend request pending and just instantly it'll update. All right, so now let's work on the UI for this user. So this guy, when he is getting a request, so I might just have to go and create a new account. So let's go into incognito and let's sign up for a new account. Okay, so you signed up <clears throat> and then let's say I want to give this guy over here a friend request. Oh, one thing, look, I went to my own profile and it's still showing the button. So let's, let's fix that by going to the show page and what we're going to do is let's just wrap this whole container. We'll say if current user not equal to at user. And so it'll only show it if it's a different user. Now for reload, we don't see that button on our own page. But on this side, since we're a different user, we do see the button. And then boom, I sent a friend request. So now on this side, I need to have some sort of UI to show the friend request. So I think I'll just probably add it. Well, we could add it right in this drop down. We could have like a friend request link, or we could add like a little bell with a drop down. So it depends. Hmm, what should we do? Let's just do it inside of the same drop down. And we could have like a link friend request. And we could set something like that up real quick. Let's go over to the layouts, the nav bar, and let's just quickly add a link. Say like received friend request. Now this is gonna go to probably I'll just make a controller called received friend request controller. Or wait, but it wouldn't be like that in the path. So we go to received friend request path. Uh, which we don't have right now so whoops if we reload we get an error because there's no path for that so let's quickly add that by going into the routes.rb so in the config folder routes.rb we're going to add another resources for received friend requests and then we're going to have an index action so we can display all of the received friend requests 
Then I'm going to go ahead and create that controller. So in the app controllers, we're going to create the received friend request controller. So just inherit from application controller. Then we'll have an index action. So this is what the class would look like for the controller. There's really not much in it. And then we'll have a corresponding views folder for received friend requests. And then an index.html erb file. Just like that, we have uh, the page set up. So then I might just have a title here that says like how many friend requests you have. Let's say current user dot received friend requests dot count. You have received and then count this friend request. All right, let's see how that looks. So this is like the most simple sort of layout. We refresh. Okay, no more errors, so that's good. We click here. We now have this link for received friend requests. We click on it. Oh, it says undefined method received friend requests. Or, oh, because I called it incoming friend requests, not received. So we call it incoming friend requests. Or actually, why don't we call it received friend requests? Because that, since we're already using that. So let's go over to uh, the user model. And right here we see has many incoming friend requests. We can just simply change that to have many received friend requests. And that's not even going to affect anything uh, because we're not changing anything like the database column. We're just literally changing the name that we use on the user model. All right, so if we reload, now we see you've received one friend request. So perfect, we already have this little setup. And then it might be nice to show like an alert up on top of the nav bar if you have any of those requests. So I can quickly do that. So on this dropdown, uh, we should still leave if current user, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's put if current user outside of the dropdown since we're not even gonna show anything. Uh, if there's not, if you know what I mean. So I'm taking this whole div, I'm moving it in. And then we're not gonna, we're only gonna display it if there's a current user, see? All right, now what I was going to do is, so this dropdown, this is the whole container. I have class relative, which is good because now I'm going to add this little div that'll stick up on top by doing absolute zero. And then I'll put the counts. So you can say current user dot received friend request dot count. Let's see how that looks. Reload. All right, see, so it kind of has like a count on the button. And then we could do some styling. Kind of make it like an alert. Okay, so that's pretty blocky. That'd be rounded full. But maybe we want to do ex 3 py one And I don't think text large. I think we just want to have like regular. We might even want text small, actually. Make it smaller and then I could change the top property to make it show up at a different place. So why don't we do like negative top one or no negative top two and I want to push it over to the right. Let's say right zero. I think I want to give it a lot more right. So let's do negative right four. All right. See, and it kind of pushes over and then you can kind of see like, okay, that means there's probably something new. And then receive friend request. We could also have like the same sort of thing on that. So real quick, like if we go back here, we don't want to show it if there's zero friend requests. So let's add a condition around this div. I'll quickly, I'll zoom in here so we can see this. So it's just a simple thing to show the receive friend request count. Now what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll say if dot count greater than zero. How about that? Don't want to display that. Okay. And if we reload, we'll see this one. It doesn't show it, but on this one it does. And I also want to show the little count on the link. So to do that, we'll just go right here to this link. 
and we're gonna have to add this. So actually, I'll change this so that we can pass in more content by just uh, deleting that, like the text of the link, and turning it into a block. And then we can pass in our own HTML. Friend requests. And then we could pass in the count. We could do another element. We do that same like BG Indigo. Let's see how that looks. I have a feeling it might look a little bit off, so we're gonna have to tweak it. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look bad. So yeah, see. Says the count. I mean, obviously we could use some styling, further styling, but this is a pretty basic setup. And then we know we have our received friend request. And on this page, I wanna show all of the friend requests and either have a button to accept it or decline it. So that should be pretty easy. I'll just quickly close out all these tabs and we can get started on that section. All right, so now let's work on the code to show the friend request and also have the buttons to accept or decline. All right, so let's go in here, go over to the apps, the views, and the received friend requests. So now we're on the index. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to, well, we're gonna loop over each of these. We can do some Ruby. We can say each do friend request. And then inside of here, well, we could probably do a partial for this. And render the friend request, pass in friend request. All right, let's do a partial. I just go to see friend request. I each the year B. All right, now inside of here, I'm thinking that we could probably just have a flex class that goes across. And then we have a little bit of padding and inside of it. We'd have whoever sent the friend request. We could say, we take, I think right now we do have their names. We could say full name sent to a friend request. And then we would have probably two icons, like a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's quickly reload and see what this looks like. If I can get out of the code editor. I got locked myself in here. Let's reload. It says you received one friend request. So yeah, it actually is showing, but it looks like uh, we need to fix the styling here. <clears throat> Let's open up Visual Studio again. I just closed out because it was it was so random. Oh, so this like kind of I guess that's just like a my change that I didn't save. Okay, so we have this div. It looks like uh, we need to change the styling. So let's actually add a div around this whole page. And let's make sure that we tell it to do flex call. I think by default it's using the flex class. Okay, now it says you've received one friend request. And then now we're showing this. But I wanted to add, uh, I think I want to add a background color. So that it stands out a little bit from the rest of the page. Let's use something like this. Uh, not that dark though. A little bit lighter and then let's try to make this take up the whole width so right now i am doing width full but it looks like it's not taking up the full width so up here let's make sure that we're doing width full on this top element okay there we go and now you can see the front request all right we can even make this be like rounded this is you know this guy sent you a front request right that's his name and then we'd have uh accept or decline I also want to add a little bit of spacing. So let's go and style this H1. I can just give it a margin bottom of six. And let's also make this larger. So like you received one friend request. And then we have this request. All right, let's add those icons. So let's go to hero icon. I don't think we add any icons into this app yet either. But I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. It's actually so, so easy. So first I just need the thumb. Thumbs up. All you do is you copy the SVG. Oh, there's also a few different options. So like, see, there's a, a solid. So like, let's say you're liking a post. We probably have something like that. 
but for us it's just really like accept or decline so these two work so then we just put it in here and now you can literally just put your SVG right here on the page or you can put it in a partial or if you're using a library for components which I do sometimes in some of my videos but honestly for simplicity I don't really want to add that whole gem right now let's just do this we're gonna have uh, well, I already forgot what this is. That's why you might want to like put in a partial. Let's at least do a partial. So let's go in views and I'm going to create a new folder called shared. And then let's just put this icon in a partial in there. Call it thumbs up icon. HTML ERB. So this is another easy way we can share these icons around. And then right in here, just render shared. Thumbs up icon. It's just as easy as that. If we reload, we see the thumbs up icon. I kind of like this method, just doing a partial. <clears throat> it's pretty easy. And then we could have one for thumbs down. Just go create another partial. Thumbs down icon HTML to your B. And we'll make sure that we grab this thumbs down. Pop that right in there. And just like that, we have two icons. Right here, thumbs up, thumbs down. And I want to style them a little bit. So for one, I feel like these, we could probably shove them to the end. Uh, so to do that, let's just add, we have to add one thing up here. Since we're already doing flex, we can say justify between, which will push them apart. But then also I'm going to add another container around the icons themselves. So that there's two sections. First, it's the message. Uh, which actually let's add a container around this now since there's not really anything right there that's been reload okay now it looks like something like this although i don't know why it went on a different hmm justify between i'm not sure why i did that oh right here we span uh there's a problem with the element i didn't close it off correctly so that's what happened all right now this i'm gonna do flex and i'm gonna do gap just to kind of push them apart a little bit. And then we can add, uh, let's just add a link around it. Cause that's what we're eventually gonna have. It's gonna be a link to, which is gonna go to some path, which right now we don't have set up. Uh, let's see if we just wrap this to the link. Now we can add styling on the link too. Like let's say, that's Indigo 500. Let's just see if that works. Yeah, look, so we can style that and then if we want to make it bigger we'd actually have to change the icon because right now we have it set to a, a specific height like with six but if we say with full it'll take up the full height but now we have to actually set it each time so we should be able to do that right on the link yeah we can so let's just do it like that thumbs down icon i'm gonna do the same thing the icon's going to be with full which immediately is gonna make it huge but then as long as we Put a container around it to make it stay in its place then uh, it'll be fine so it's like that i added two containers now we have two containers we have this indigo icon for plus up why don't we just make the spread all right so you can choose and i want to add hover states so to do hover states we can just simply hover and if we just want to do like the same background for both uh, we can just do it for both well, we probably won't. We probably want to have like a indigo background, a red background. Oh, it's also like just rounded. So that's what the hover state looks like. And maybe there should be a little bit of padding. Oh. Uh, but that does affect some things with the sizing. Maybe just a little dash of padding. And then that's easy to, enough to understand. You click here, it accepts the friend request. You click here, it declines it right now we don't have that logic set up but we can quickly add that by just adding a new route or not root a uh, new route <laughs> so let's go to the config folder the routes to rb and i'll actually just add it on the received friend request All right so we have only index why don't we do a create action just to make this simple all right so now in the controllers on the received friend request controller We'll have this create method, which is where we'll add all of our code to either accept the friend request or decline it. And I think I'll just keep it simple 
So right here on the page, we're going to do the link, which would be received friend request. Path. Or I think it would go to received friend request, the plural path. And then let's just pass in an attribute accepted. So for thumbs up, accepted would be true. And then for thumbs down, accepted would be false. And it's really just that simple to build apps. <laughs> but yeah, accepted true. And over here, accepted false. And then we also have to turn it into a post request with that turbo attribute. I'm going to add data turbo method post. And if you're wondering what I did, I just put it into a new line because it's kind of like wrapping. And I can do that as long as you have the comma right here. So now we have a link that does a post method to uh, right here. And then here's where we'd handle the logic. We'd say, actually, we'd probably need another thing. We'd need accepted, but we'd also need uh, like a few things. Because the current user now would be the requested user. And we still need the like the actual person. Or how about, how about no, how about we just pass in the friend request ID? Uh, so we can say friend request, friend request ID. We'll also pass that in the URL. So now we're passing a friend request and we're also passing accepted. All right, now in this controller, we'd say friend request equals friend request. Actually, let's do current user dot received friend request. Because in this controller, the current user would be the one that's looking at their received friend request. And then we try to find one for the params friend request, which is gonna be the ID. All right, I'll we'll say if friend request, then we can say friend request dot update accepted. Params accepted. All right, so then we update it and then we probably just be fine to redirect back to receive friend requests path and we can do a notice like you well actually we don't know if they accepted it or not we could check that <laughs> uh, we could check that in here we could say it's not accepted not true now I'll do this little, you don't have to do this, this is kind of confusing. It's a ternary operator. Let me move this out of the interpolation to make it simpler. So have like notice equals notice text. So if the, so what I'm saying is if the accepted was true, then I'll say like if you accepted, you did not or you, how about we say declines? <laughs> all right, and now let's see if we put this all together, does this work? Because we haven't tested it yet. All right, so all I have to do to test it is just to click that, but I want to be looking in the console too, just in case we get an error. So let's have the console open, and then now let's just click accept. Oh, so we got undefined method true for an instance. Okay, that that's fair. I think uh, like accepted. It passed it in true, but it was actually like a string. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to say instead of dot true, is it equal to true? The string. Although now I think we did accept it. We look in the console did we have any yeah we did update it see accepted true so now it's accepted but we're still seeing this so we want to fix that code because right now uh when you accept a friend request we're still showing all of the received even though it's accepted so to fix that we just have to go back to the received friend request index page and then right here we're saying current user dot receive friend request each do we need to change this up so actually we need a new method really instead of received friend requests uh, we're going to use a method called pending friend requests right and right now we don't have that so i'm going to define that on 
the user model. So if you go to the models, user.rb, you can just simply make a method called pending friend request. It's going to get the friend request where accepted nil. And now if we reload, oh wait, not re uh, actually <laughs> received friend requests. Oops, because friend request would be my sent friend request. So actually, I meant to say received friend request where accepted no. And if we reload, it says you have received zero friend requests. We should maybe probably change that because that doesn't make sense. Because since we previously did, uh, let's just say, uh, like currently you don't have any. So we'd actually have to do another condition in here to check and then say different things. So let's go and put this on new line. Let's say if. Check this count is greater than zero. Then we'll do the regular text. Otherwise, we can say like we currently don't have any friend requests. Please check back later. Or you currently don't have any pending friend requests right now. Please check back later. So a message like that, that's kind of nice. Uh, but we'll see up in the navbar, we still need to change that because it, see, it still thinks that it's still using the wrong code there. So that's really easy. We just have to go to the layouts navbar and change from using the received friend request to using the pending friend request. So just right here for these two things. So first, uh, the alert here, whoops, just the pending friend request. And also, I think we only want to show that. So what that is, is that little pop up here. We also only want to show that if there is any. So let's add another condition. This is greater than zero. And we're going to show that little alert on the friend request link. And then over here, we have to change this from received friend requests to pending friend requests. All right, now if we reload, uh, everything's back to normal. Yeah, that's how you add a friend request inside of your Rails app, inside of LinkedIn. So now we can become friends with other users. Now, if you look on this page, we still haven't implemented anything for the button. So after you become friends, we definitely want to change this so it says like your friends or something. So let's quickly do that. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go back to the profile and then actually the friend request partial. We're going to go in here. And then on this condition here, uh, we need to change this. So if current user friend request dot find by this dot present. So <laughs> this is saying if there's a, a friend request that's there. So then we're going to also have another condition in here. We're going to say, uh, I'm going to say if friend request equals this. And we don't even need present because if it fails, it'll go, it'll give back nil, which will also go to the else condition and then inside of here we'll say if friend request dot accepted and we're actually going to show a different message so why don't we still do a link but we just want to go and uh, let's comment this out for a second and we'll say you are friends and then also change it to be green instead of indigo it's like a shining green button and then we're not going to have it do any turbo method right now so it's just going to be like an empty link and i'll think about if i want to make it do anything which you might want to be able to unfriend so that's one option so just like this i added a second condition inside of the first part which now checks is the friend request accepted and if it is then i'll show that message says you are friends else it says friend request pending now let's say we do want to make this be able to unfriend it's actually as simple as just having like keeping the code as before from this side or from this button down here the friend request pending button because that also works as an unfriend in our current send in our current setup so if you look if i click on here so you instantly just will delete that friend request. Connect with user, friend request pending. 
Now we have to go through the whole process. Now what happens if they decline? <clears throat> well, it'll just say friend request pending still. And I feel like that's that's a fair setup because we don't even want to really alert the user like, hey, they declined your request. We don't want to do anything negative like that. So right now, this is a really awesome setup. We learned how to add friendships and friend requests into our Rails app. Now, it's a really simple setup. We're only using one model for a friend request object. So like uh, a one way to refactor might be to add another model for like a friendship connection between the two. But this way keeps it very simple and I like it being simple. So I actually like this way. If you guys enjoyed this video, please press that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and comment down an idea to build in future videos.